This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi, I'm Rodney. This is my Kimba Car Region EDH deck. This is Kemba, she's the general of the, com of the deck here. Every equipment that's attached to her during my upkeep, I get to put a 2-2 cat token into play for each equipment attached. She's 2-4 for 3, so it's not bad, and get her out there pretty quick. Extra sleeves in case she gets shuffled. Then you have your, your basic lands, all planes. Show off my Zendikar. 1, 2, 22. Basic lands, just to keep them flowing. And then I have uh, there's this factory to help produce two two assembly workers, which are artifacts as well, that help keep creatures on the board when I, I need it. And then we have uh, Nykthos. This here is a, a workhorse when it comes down to it, because I can tap and add like eight mana to my mana pool real easy, and it gets quick, and so I can dump out my hand if need be. El Hadro. Well, Ganjo, the castle. This one's nice because you can always protect Kimba from different abilities uh, or other legendary creatures in the deck. Just nice to knock off the two damage for one white. Emery of Skyruin. This one, if anything ends up in my graveyard, uh, I can just wait until I have seven planes and start fetching them back. With so many planes, it makes it pretty easy to do. Wimbrest Heights. Attacking with three creatures in a Kimba deck is not hard, so playing a spell for free is always gold. Thawing Glaciers helps get those planes that you need, the seven for the Emiria. Dark Steel Citadel helps me get metal crafting, and having an indestructible land doesn't help, or doesn't hurt. <clears throat> tech Edge, I usually run Tech Edge for lands that, that bug me, like... Uh, Maze of Ith and any other land that gets on my nerves, I can just take it right out. Thespian Stage, if I see something that I want, like to copy and maybe produce it myself, I can pay two and do that. Soul Ring, for obvious reasons. Now this is pure white deck, so having all my white spells cost one less, once again it's gold. Metal crafting, once again, easy to get to in a Kimba deck because it's based on mostly artifacts. A little bit extra ramp there. Once again, Cage Sun, giving all my white creatures and planes an ability so I can produce more mana and bump up my creatures. Searching for more planes. And if I'm really hurting, I get two. Endless Horizon, once again, helps me get all the planes I need out of my deck, or if I have all I need, I can always just thin the deck and start drawing all the cards I need. <clears throat> Lightning Greaves, obvious, protects my general, gives me the haste if I need it. Argentum Armor, it's, it's got a hefty cost to it, but there's other cards in here to make it cheaper, and so I can get it equipped and on my general and get rid of pesky permanence. General's Kabuko. Because my general hexproof prevents all combat damage so I can swing away freely. And also produces cats for every equipment. So giving it trample helps that out. Helps me get through with the general damage quicker. And you'll notice that with Kimba and all these equipments that you're seeing, that general damage goes quick. You can get it piled on. So having trample to get it through their little 1-1 one -one chump blockers really helps. I don't think I put the culture set. No, I didn't. Uh, Shield of Cauldra makes uh, the sword and the helm indestructible and also makes the equipped creature indestructible. It gives me a cat during my upkeep. Jit, for obvious reasons. And the sword gives it plus five, plus five, and if it does damage to a creature, remove it from the game. Pretty good. Sword of Vengeance, once again, is the trample. Gets me through. 
one I got. Duh. Uh, this one's hard because you got to equip it first because it's only power two. But once you get it on there, it helps it out, giving it plus three, plus zero on trample, and at a low cost. Feast and Famine. Untaps all the lands, makes them discard a card, little hand hate. War and Peace. Gain life, damage to the hand size. That's pretty good. Milling 10 and a little 2 2 blocker. And protection from all the colors. Returns a creature, gains me 3 life. Protection from black and white, probably the most important. And Fire and Ice. Probably the best weapon in this deck for as far as attached to Kemba. <clears throat> the other part of the helm. Giving it first strike, trample, or haste, sorry. Yeah, trample and haste. This is a, a good piece to have on her right away, so you can get in there and anything else you attach to her is gold. Just in case they do block her, I get two cards out of it with the <clears throat> infiltrator infiltrator's lens. It's pretty good. I can get two cards every time they do block her, so if I do need to get into my better equipment, I can always throw this on her and have them chump it and get my cards hopefully get into something that has trample. Double Strike works really well with the swords. Light and Shadow, Fire and Ice. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now this one here is a new addition. I figured if after a board wipe I still have this equipment in play, I can still get a 4-4 out of it for a chump blocker if nothing else. Just in case I want to sacrifice some of my cat tokens, I can get two cards out of it to help me draw into more productive cards. Always good. Batter Skull. Enough said. Life Link plus four plus four. A little bit of haste and hexproof. That's not that bad. That's pretty good for one. <clears throat> I threw this in the deck because it gives the general plus two plus two. Plus it gives all the cats that are white plus two plus two as well, so I have four four general and four four cats being produced every upkeep. So I figured this was a good add. What's better than an Akimba deck than equipping for free? The Windwalker here, you can it's flying two three blocker, and then you can tap and, and attach any equipment you control to a creature control. Seems good with a half year cost equipment or equip cost. Same thing here. Just not flying and wearing a dress. Well, with all this equipment, sometimes you need that one piece. Stone Hewer will help you get to that one piece. Same thing with the Stone Forge. And get it out there quicker. Aura Shards. Not anymore. <laughs> with Leona here, he helps you protect all your equipment that you have out in play. You don't want to put stuff out there just to watch it die to Aura Shards, so that's why he's in there. <clears throat> now, when you get into producing so many cat tokens, every upkeep that she comes in handy where you're gaining that much life for however you produce so and she's protection from black and red which is also another plus. Pierce still play equipment draw a card after so many metal craft you get to equip for free once again very well in this deck. Equipping as an instant beautiful ability once you get the uh, lightning greaves out in play no more single targets for you and we get into removal here. You got your path with all the equipments. You go with a dispatch, which is easy to do, and it does the same thing as a path without the bonus of giving them a land. And then the life. Remove from the game with the swords. And just in case you can't target them, you can make them sack. Because once again, Metalcraft, two creatures for three is not bad. Evoke assistance. It, Revoke existence is because, you know, you, you see a lot of gods now in play, and removing them from the game is a lot easier to do. Same comes true with the Return to Dust. Remove two artifacts or enchantments. An Aura of Silence. Making it two more to make them play it helps you out. And then if it gets down dirty, you can just sack it and destroy whatever's getting on your nerves. <clears throat> I'll lay with the buyback. It's constant enchantment removal. And for the pesky general that keeps coming back, you can shuffle it in their deck with ablation. 
and those decks that use their graveyards against you. Re reusable graveyard removal and 2-3 flyer if needs be. Pretty good stuff. And if you just can't stop it, story circle. Name a color and you get protection from it as long as you keep a white open. Pretty good card. <clears throat> now artifact retrieval. It's usually what I use the trading post for is to get creature or artifacts back that have been destroyed already. And that's why this is in the deck. This one here helps you search up your piece. It should have been this one. And the pieces that has died, you can always bring it back. So you're always getting back your artifacts from the graveyard with the one. Now what's better than first strike, trample, protection from red, haste, nothing. That's why that's in there. Prototype portal. Uh, if you got a sword that you really like and you want more of them, or any artifact in the deck that you would like to more of, you put it on the prototype portal, and you can produce multiple copies of it. All right, Eldrazi Monuments, gold in this deck too, so every turn upkeep you make a cat, you sack a cat to this, it's indestructible, and plus one, plus one. It's not a big deal, the upkeep costs, when you're already producing three cats. And flying. <clears throat> Staff of Nim, a little pokey with the ability to draw an extra card during your upkeep. Uh, Steel Hellkite. I run this mostly for token removal because I can get through and and pay zero after he's done his damage and get rid of all their tokens or whatever. Yeah, I mean, is I think he's an underrated card because uh, he's easy to get through and he can deal the damage and take out a lot of things that are messing up your game. <clears throat> What's better than saying you can't attack me? Blazing Archon's in there for that. Now. Wool Coral, I put in here because I don't mind losing a creature during my upkeep. Because I'm producing so many cats. It also works against plane walkers and enchantments and anything else I don't have a lot of. I can help get rid of them. Wool Coral to the rescue. <clears throat> Stopping you from sacking and paying life to play spells and giving my cats plus one plus one? Seems pretty good. I play this one for the lifelink mostly. It seems like if I'm behind and I'm needing some lifelink or first strike to block, she comes in handy. And if I, after I have about 10 cats and they all have exalted, Kimba's swinging in there pretty hefty. So, Sublime Archangel there for mass damage. Light Wilder. Gets rid of black and red cards. Elish Norn. What's better than plus two, plus two, and minus two, minus two on your, your opponents? Not much. You have been producing four, four cats every turn, and multiple of them. Seems pretty nasty. In order here, I have attack with three cats and him. I can make you block like you don't want to. Or not at all, whatever. So I figured he was a good add to the deck, being that I had so many creatures that are going to attack you. Stopping you from using your your abilities or your creatures. Laval is there just to help with that. She's she's been a, a bear to a lot of people with activated abilities, especially with all the commanders out there now. With all the activated abilities, just nasty. Linvala to the rescue. Destroying all non-white creatures. Since I just produced non-white creatures, it doesn't seem like a bad thing. So mass clarifies in there. A Johnny. He's in there mostly for the plus three, plus three, and flying. Or double strike. The second ability. I plus him up every now and then just to give Kimba plus one counters, but the double strike's what helps with the Johnny keeping the deck. Elsbeth. She's hard to get up there, but she's in there for the indestructibility. Having a bunch of artifacts in Kimba deck that are indestructible makes it so victory's almost a sure. And then. True conviction. Nothing worse than double strike lifelink. Alright, there's my Kimba deck. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and favorite.